Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this video, we're going to look at two of the easiest and most commonly used techniques for masking in After Effects. Rightio, so we're now in After Effects, and first of all, I'm going to double click the project panel, and then import an image and a piece of video footage. There we go, all done. Now this piece of video footage is from today's sponsor, Invato Elements, and I'm going to drag this onto the timeline, and then let's give this a play. Ooh, very nice indeed. So let's scrub back to the beginning, go up to composition, and then select composition settings. And these values are based on the clip I dragged to the timeline, but if you'd like to edit these, you can do that from here. Right, now I'm going to grab the still image, drag this onto the timeline as well, above the video footage, press S for scale, and then scale this up. There we go, perfect. Now I can right click this layer and go down to rename. And I think I'll call this something like interior. Now with this layer selected, I can go up and select one of the shape tools or the pen tool. In this example, I'm going to use the pen tool, zoom in nice and close, and then start cutting out the window. And in this example, it's basically doing a dot to dot around the entire window. You can do straight lines with the pen tool, or you can click and hold to draw curves. So you can see I'm zooming in here. I'm doing this very quickly. So when you do this, please take much more time and care. The end result will look infinitely better. So let's just finish this up here and then go all the way back to that starting point to complete that shape. Now, because we drew the shape with a layer selected, it automatically gets added as a mask to that layer. I can now right click this, go to mask and inverted to flip it around the other way. And if I press spacebar to play this, you can now see the footage playing in that space where the window used to be. And because we can see the mountain footage, we know that our mask is working correctly. Now let's scrub that playhead back to the beginning, go over to our interior layer and twizzle down that mask, mask one, and we can now feather the mask as well. This adds a slight bit of softening to the edge and can often make things look a little more believable. However, if we select this layer and press P to adjust the position, you can see that the mask is tied to the layer. However, there is a way around this using another masking technique. And before we cover that, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. And this is a platform that provides millions of assets with unlimited downloads, all with a commercial license. And as I mentioned, this is where that beautiful mountainscape video came from. And their library includes photos, motion graphics, music, sound effects, brushes, icons, logos, UI kits, mockups, templates, 3D assets, and so much more. God, I'm out of breath now. There's a link in the description if you'd like to sign up for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. So before we do this next technique, let's select the mask we created before and then just delete this. Also for this technique, we're going to need to reorganize the layers, so drag the still image underneath. Let's hide the video footage for now, and this time making sure that we have no layers selected, let's go and select the pen tool. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again, and pen tool out the window. Now you'll see as I start drawing this, we actually end up creating a red shape, because we're not just creating a mask, we're creating a new shape in After Effects that has its own shape layer. The problem is this red fill does get in the way of us pen tooling the window. So with the layer selected, press T to bring up opacity and just bring this down a bit. And now I can see what I'm doing. I can click on that last anchor point with the pen tool and then continue drawing the shape. Now being able to actually see where I'm going, of course. So let's go and do this last one here. And you can see it's a little bit high, so I'm just going to drag this down and refine that path. We can now bring the opacity back up to 100%, and then I can right click the layer and give this a name. So I'm going to call this Shape Mask. And I can collapse those options, and I can actually hide this layer. Now I'm going to turn on the video footage layer, and then from the bottom left corner, select the second icon in, and you can see this expands the layers panel, revealing the track matte options. So if I click this, I can select alpha matte, or alpha inverted, depending on what you're going for. Nope, that's wrong, alpha matte was right. And what this is doing is using the layer directly above it as a mask, which is the shape we created with the pen tool. And similarly as before, we can play this and see the footage playing in the space where the window used to be. However, the difference being now is that I can select the video footage layer, 
Press P and adjust the position and this doesn't change the position of the mask. So next I'm going to click the stopwatch for position. You can see this adds a keyframe to the timeline. And then I can scrub forward a few seconds and then go back and adjust the position. You can see I'm moving this from right to left. So as the transition plays out, it's going to simulate a panning effect. So that's pretty cool and the mask stays exactly where it is. Let's click the stopwatch icon to remove those keyframes. Now the beauty of this technique is that if I want to link the mask to the video footage, I can do that by parenting one layer to another. And now you can see that the mask is paired to the video footage, so if I move the footage around, the mask moves with it. And those are some of the easiest and most commonly used masking techniques in After Effects. Now I'm going to go to Effects and Presets and search for Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to drag this onto the mask, and this is a little bit of a hack to simulate that feathering that we were able to add with the first masking technique. So let's crank up the blur, and you can see by doing that, it's going to slightly soften the edges. So there we go, that's a pretty nifty trick if you ever need to add a bit of feathering to a custom mask. Let's remove that Gaussian blur effect for now. And again, from effects and presets, let's search for Lumetri. I'm going to drag this onto the still image. And then from the effect controls panel, I'm going to play around with the settings. The goal here is to make the original image match the video footage a little bit more. So you can see I'm playing around with the curves here to introduce a little bit more contrast. And I'm also going to make the still image look a bit cooler. This is going to help it blend with the mountainscape in the background. So pretty simple yet effective. And now we can scrub back to the beginning and give this a play. And there we go, there's two different techniques for masking and also a fun way to combine photos with video and After Effects. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So if you enjoyed this one, you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.